It has been about a year and a half since the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the RP2040 and the Pico Development Board, but finally the Pico Board has been refreshed. This new board, the Raspberry Pi Pico W, adds Wi-Fi functionality alongside the RP2040 via the addition of a CYW43439 Wi-Fi chip from Infineon. Welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems video, where today we're going to give you an overview of the Pico W. We have many tutorials about how to program this board in C and covering how to use the wireless connectivity coming very shortly, so make sure you are subscribed for those. So let's begin with the pricing of this board. The Pico W comes in at a $2 bump over the base original Pico. That means this board is available for $6. In the UK, the board uh, comes in at about £5.90 from Pi Hut, and I know that's not quite a US to GBP conversion, but that's due to uh, VAT and so on. The standard Pico board will still be on sale. Uh, this is another Pico SKU and not a replacement. So already, straight off the back, this does seem like a great value board. Alongside the Pico W, Raspberry Pi have released two more versions of the Pico, and these are the Pico H and Pico WH. And these add pre-installed header pins to both the original Pico and the new Pico W. And these H versions also add a new three pin uh, JST connector for debugging. In terms of price, the header pins add a dollar onto the base price of both. The WH version of the Pico is not yet available, but is planned to be released at some point in August. Now let's have a look at the specifications of the board, starting with the RP2040 chip that powers the Pico. This chip is no different than the version on the original Pico, but we'll go over it now for any, anybody unfamiliar. The RP2040 features a dual-core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor running stock at 133 MHz, although it can be quite easily overclocked if you need a bit more power. It has 264 KB of SRAM and two SPI, I2C and UART controllers for peripheral interfacing. It also has four analog to digital converter inputs. Um, these inputs are sort of muxed or switched into a single 12-bit analog to digital converter. And it has eight PIO state machines, USB 1.1 host and device support, as well as 16 PWM channels. Supporting the RP2040 chip is two megabytes of flash storage for your programs. This is a little bit on the low side, but has obviously been chosen to keep the costs down. The RP2040 chip can support up to 16 megabytes of flash storage, although 16 megabytes would bump up the bill of materials price in this case. Also in keeping with the cost saving measures on the board, there is a micro USB connector. It would have been nice to see USB-C, um, but you know, that would add cost again. And there is a single button which acts as a boot select button. There is no reset button on the board, so you have to sort of plug or unplug the USB cable. And that does call into question the durability of a micro USB connector. That being said, um, I haven't had any durability problems with the base Pico model after a year of use. So you know, your mileage may vary, but I've had no problems. There is also a green user LED on board. Okay, so all those specs were the same as the original Pico. But now let's get to the interesting part of the board, and that is the Infineon CYW43439, bit of a mouthful, uh, Wi-Fi chip. And this uh, chip supports 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, um, and also supports the, the 802.11 BGNN Wi-Fi specification. It claims it can support a max speed of 96 megabits per second. Interestingly, this chip also supports Bluetooth 5.2, as well as Bluetooth Low Energy, although this is not supported at launch. It appears that this is a software limitation of the Pico SDK, and not actually a hardware limitation, so perhaps this could be unlocked soon. If not, I think it could certainly be hacked. I'll certainly be looking into that. Raspberry Pi claim that they may enable support in the future. Interestingly, this chip actually has two ARM cores on board, a Core M3 and Core M4. And both of these uh, microcontroller cores are actually more powerful than the M0 Plus cores on the RP2040. 
although these calls have the, the job of handling the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth systems, which are quite uh, demanding. One of the main competitors to this type of board, and I'm sure some of you are thinking about it now, would be the ESP32 family of devices. If we look at sites like AliExpress, uh, a, a dual-core ESP32 dev board can be picked up for around three to four pounds plus some, some shipping. So probably around five pounds for me in the UK. The cores of an ESP32 are more powerful than those of the RP2040, and the ESP32 does typically have more RAM. With the documentation and support provided by Raspberry Pi, I think that the Pico W is more suited for people that are getting into developing with microcontrollers, and the ESP32 would perhaps be more suited for more experienced folk. In terms of the form factor of the Pico W, this board is exactly the same as the base Pico, measuring in at 21 by 51.3 millimeters. The pinout is the same, although the debug pins have been shifted upwards towards the middle of the Pico W. I don't think this is too much of a big deal. Another change is that the green user LED on the base Pico is connected to GPIO pin 25 on the RP2040. However, on the Pico W, this is actually connected to a pin on the CYW43439 chip. I need to abbreviate that somehow. Um, so there may be some differences between programs for both boards. On the theme of programming, this board can be programmed in C and using MicroPython. On this channel, we primarily use C, so we'll focus there now. Do let us know in the comments if you do want to see any MicroPython tutorials, um, as that would be something we're interested in taking forward. In terms of C programming, Raspberry Pi have updated their Pico SDK, so you will have to pull the update from their GitHub uh, into your previous workflow, and then you can program it using the same VS Code workflow we discussed in the video uh, about setting up the VS Code workflow. I will link that in the cards above. Usually, at this point of a review, we would actually include a programming demo or guide, but we actually have a, quite a few tutorials releasing in hopefully the next couple of days, focusing on how to use the Wi-Fi connectivity. So I don't want to repeat myself, but make sure you are subscribed to see those. Currently, at this time, there is no Arduino IDE support for the updated boards, but I don't think it would take very long for this to become implemented. Okay, so now it is time for some thoughts and conclusions. I think that for $6, this board is a really good value. Uh, I think adding Wi-Fi to projects and smartifying pretty much everything seems to be the way that things are going, um, however you may feel about that. I mean, I personally don't think that everything needs an internet connection, but there are some pretty cool things that you can do with devices such as this. And at $6, it's very easy to just grab one and try it out. I think that other RP2040 boards that feature Wi-Fi connectivity, for example, the Challenger RP2040 from Invector Labs, are going to take a real hit in sales because of this new board. Raspberry Pi are just able to produce these units at a scale that smaller companies cannot even come close to. I do think that this is a natural progression of the Pico board, and I'm looking forward to the future to perhaps a refresh of the RP2040 microcontroller itself which might add wireless connectivity without having to use an additional coprocessor, for example. I think that would be a natural step. Anyway, I think this is a very interesting board and well worth the $2 price bump over the base Pico. It's a bit of a shame that they kept the uh, micro USB connector, the lack of a reset button, but still, I would recommend picking one up just to have a mess around with. Be sure to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with tutorials for the Pico W and let us know what you think of the board down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.